Hi, I'm Andrea. I'm 39 years old and I'm from San Antonio, Texas. Growing up in San Antonio was really lonely. I grew up with divorced parents. I lived with my mom, I had a brother and a sister. I found out that I had BPD when I had just had my daughter, I was 16 years old. Her grandmother on her dad's side thought that we should see a counselor since we were young parents. And we were discussing a lot of my behavior, which was outrageous. My tantrums were pretty intense. That particular therapist had a talk with me, just me and her, and she gave me the diagnosis. I didn't go into treatment for BPD until majority of my 20s and I still danced around it. I wasn't consistent. I also kind of felt like, like maybe there really wasn't something wrong. It wasn't until my 30s where I, I really settled down and was like, okay, this needs to be treated. BPD at its worst for me, um, I was self-harming a lot and that was really scary. The loss of my identity is like questioning like, who, who am I? Why am I doing this? What is this behavior? That's when I knew that things were completely out of hand because I would self-harm quite frequently. I was very angry too. I become very combative when I feel that someone has struck me so deeply and I don't have the words to say back or because I don't want to say something as equally mean back and that's not to say that I can't be mean. We can all be mean, but I would just not use my words. I would use my fists. The way I became to be in recovery was a hospital stay. Upon my release, they sent me to this treatment center and they immediately put me in DBT. And I, I just remember that I did not care for the meetings. And I'm just like, this is so boring. Why am I here? I don't like this. I wanna leave, but you know, I stayed. I didn't put any effort into it until after a few months later. I was kind of like, well, there's gotta be something to this thing. Once I really started paying attention and I was like, okay, I think I like this. I think this is helping. And before I knew it, it did occur to me that I was no longer getting upset as fast as I was because I would just get so angry so quick and I would just be like ready to just charge at someone if they said something to me. The self-harming became so much less. The more that I did the work, the better that I got. I still have rainy days. They're not always the best, but compared to where I was, it's a lot better. I'm not so mean to myself. I used to be really mean to myself and it's easier to not be so mean to myself and realize that just because I'm not like where everybody else is doesn't mean that I'm not doing something. So that's been a big change and that's been a change. That's been a recent change. I t do tend to be a person with a little rain cloud over me. I am kind of a grumpy person. I don't know why, but I'm kind of okay with that. <laughs> like I'm not worried about it. It's just my my way. Like I'm I'm actually, I'm actually a happy person. I just come off this way. Some of my hobbies are I like to do stuff with my hands. I actually like to counter cross stitch. I write a lot, I like to write. Best hobby of all time is going to shows. There is an absolute beauty of being in a crowd and everybody around you is like singing the song like with the band or maybe the singer stops singing, you know, and the singer is just like listening to everybody sing their song. I love that. So those are my interests and I really, I feel like right now sky's like the limit as far as like what I want to do. I just feel like there's options out there. I just don't know what they are. I'm still trying to figure myself out. So I'm kind of scared of that, but I'm also really excited about it. Um, one tip that I would give people that are struggling with BPD symptoms is that finding a good support system is helpful. I think with the gift of social media these days, like it's out there, even just to find that one thing in common. I know it helped me a lot. It does get better, even in your lows. Even in those lows, there's a, a song lyric I like and it's a, there's a light that never goes out. That's something that I always like, kind of tell myself, like whenever I'm out of it, like, and I'm coming back into like, like, okay, I'm good. There is a light and it never went out. Like I'm okay. That's important to remember. Sometimes it's hard to remember that. The one thing that makes my life worth living 
I did mention that I had my daughter really young. She is my everything. She never judges me. She is always ready to listen. She's always ready to try to understand. And if she doesn't, she lets me know that she's trying to. I know that being brought up by me probably wasn't very easy. She still does what she can to do the work. And she's there for me. She is just my buddy in so many things. And I literally could not do life without her. She makes coffee better. That's probably one of the best compliments I could probably ever give anybody. You know, I think as far as my recovery journey, I think I am always, and this might be for everybody, but I think I'm always gonna be a work in progress. I, I think that we're never finished. I think there's always work to do. That makes me excited because it just makes me wonder how much better am I gonna get from here? If I think I'm doing better now, how much better is it gonna get? And I'm excited to see that. Um, that makes me emotional to think about because, uh, yeah, I'm always down on myself and I just know that the work doesn't stop and I, I know that it's gonna get better and there's a life that never goes out.